Hello, my name is Madeline Lucas and I'm an Australian dietitian and today I'm sitting down to review Daisy Keach's diet for a bubble butt and flat tummy. Now, first of all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. It has been a while since I've sat down and filmed a full YouTube video for this account. I am posting three to five times a week currently on my Instagram and TikTok with shorter videos that I will eventually repost to YouTube as shorts. But in the meantime, I am trying to upload some of my older short videos to this account. And additionally, I do plan on posting two longer videos like this one to this account every month. So if you're interested in seeing more, then please give this video a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications if you want to know exactly when these videos are coming out. But today we are reviewing Daisy Keach's little what I eat in a day video from YouTube. So this specific video was actually uploaded back in April, so almost two months ago now, and I'm just gonna sit down and review it. I know there are a lot of people online who will pick apart diets in a lot of detail. Personally, I don't like to focus on the macronutrients or the kilojoules and calories so much, just because you can never really know some of the requirements based on a YouTube video. But I do wanna put out a quick little disclaimer before we get into the video that you should never base your diet off of what you see of someone else online and here is why. Number one, you don't know what their body actually requires and if it's the same as yours. Do you know how tall they are, how much they weigh, what kind of exercise they're doing every single day? And also, do you know their exact portion sizes? Even if someone's making a video like this one where they show their, you know, what I eat in a day, can you be sure that they've eaten everything that they've shown on that plate? And nothing else do you know that they finished the whole plate what kind of drinks were they having do they include all of those is that what they eat every single day probably not there's just so many different variables and this isn't even getting into if someone has a chronic disease or not then their requirements are going to be wildly different from someone who doesn't have that same disease so just please always keep in mind that you should never try to follow exactly what someone else eats or what they're workout plan is for that matter because you are not them and even if someone's diet and workout routine has wildly transformed their own lives and you would love to have their body following that to a T does not guarantee that you will get the same results as them and it could actually be very dangerous so please as always if you are planning on making any drastic changes to your own diet consult not only a doctor but preferably a dietitian because as I've mentioned before, doctors unfortunately do not have that much training in diet, food or nutrition. So preferably speak to a nutritionist or a dietitian before beginning any extreme change in diet or workout routine and not just listening to influencers online. Rant over, let's get this video up. I'm going to screen record it and show you my reaction. Okay, so I have the video up on my laptop. It's titled, What I Eat in a Day for a Flat Tummy and a Big Booty. I'm gonna play it. It's 11 minutes long, so I'm just gonna show you little snippets. I will have this link down below if you wanna go watch the whole video. And again, I'm only showing parts of this video for educational purposes. I hope this doesn't interfere with any copyrights, but we'll see how it goes. Before I even play the video, I do have an issue with the title. Just the idea that you can eat certain foods and it's only going to make your butt grow and it won't affect any other part of your body that you'll be able to you know lose weight in your stomach and also gain weight in your glutes at the same time is problematic and hopefully she addresses that in the videos i'm not going to talk too much about it right now we'll see what she says first but yeah just that whole concept really does not sit well with me Every single body is different, so what works for me might not work for you. Um, I usually intuitive eat so Okay, first of all, I like that she has mentioned that every body is different and that the, what she's eating today is just what she's found works for her. I'm hoping that the young people watching this video will be taking note of that and really truly realizing that that is the case, that they shouldn't try to follow exactly what she's doing. But she starts off strong because it's not even a minute yet and she has already said that every single body is different. But now also she's about to say something about intuitive eating. 
And I'm gonna kind of give you like the little guide to like what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I usually intuitive eat, so I don't have like a strict super. I don't know. Let's see. I kind of like intuitive eat mixed with counting macros. So like I listen to my body and what I feel like it needs, but I also try to stay within like a certain guideline of macros. Okay, so if you would be interested in hearing more like a whole video on the difference between counting macros and intuitive eating, then comment down below. I will wait to see how the rest of the video plays out, but personally, intuitive eating and counting macros, they don't really coexist at the same time. You can't truly say that you intuitively ate, even intuitively ate that day if you were also counting macros because the whole point of intuitive eating is to trust your body and know what works for you based on the feeling of the food and just trusting your instincts. Yeah, I I really don't know how I feel about intuitive eating and macro counting at the same time. So comment down below if you want more information on intuitive eating or on counting macros and what the differences are. I can make a whole separate video on that. Okay, now when it comes to carbs, the wording I think here can also be confusing. She's saying I will have one carb now and one carb later, and then I'll just cut out one carb. Like I'll have some carb before my workout, some carb after my workout, and I will cut out a carb somewhere else in the rest of the day. But kind of saying like it's one carb, like a carb. I think when she's saying that, she must mean like a serving of carbohydrate, not like one singular carbohydrate. So again, nothing too problematic, but this definitely isn't like an intuitive eating approach. It is good to have carbohydrates before a workout and after a workout to give your body fuel and energy and give your muscles energy for the workout. So there's nothing wrong with that. But when it comes to having no carbs at lunch, that's not really necessary. Is it unhealthy? No, not necessarily, but it also you don't need to have no carbs and unless you're eating like pure egg whites or a steak, it is quite difficult to truly have no carbs in a meal. You can have a lower carbohydrate and you can not eat carbohydrate rich foods. Like maybe she's avoiding breads, pastas, grains and potato based like foods for that meal, in which case you're not having like a giant serve of carbohydrate, but most foods when you're having even vegetables will involve carbohydrates. And I do wonder how she's gonna get all her serves of like veggies in in a day if you're cutting out too many carbs throughout the day. But again, we'll wait and see how the rest of the day plays out once she actually starts showing some of the food. So cute, and yes, I eat sourdough toast. I don't think it's honestly that bad if you just have one and you're about to go work out, so you're gonna go burn it off anyway. to her first meal she's got that one slice of toast it looks like about half an avocado and three strips of turkey bacon i feel like turkey bacon is a very big thing in the us in australia it's not as common most people would just eat normal bacon but turkey bacon is in general leaner lower fat which is better for you because it has less saturated fats so there's nothing wildly crazy about this meal It's also flavored with lemon juice, which is a great way to add extra flavor to your meal without adding salt or um, too much like fat. 
but yeah overall it's a fine meal i will try and make some notes and add up the like servings of all of the food groups that she's getting and mention that at the very end of the video so and as far as the turkey bacon, again, I don't have the exact details on what is included. But if we assume that that counts as more of a protein serve, that's probably maybe two serves of protein in one meal. And then the avocado is, of course, more of like a fat. Even though avocado is a fruit, it really doesn't count as a fruit based on its nutritional content. It does count more as a healthy fat. So yeah, mono and polyunsaturated fats do still count as fats even though they are heart healthy so yeah nothing crazy about this meal she is also having an energy drink which again there's a lot of pros or cons to energy drinks so i'm not going to talk about that too much let's just move on and see what she has for the rest of the day every other week i'll get a breakout like some weeks my skin will be really clear sometimes it won't be so i started seeing this lady and she's putting me on these like vitamins and stuff and this is high COVID and move C D3 vitamin D3 drops. Have some of my charcoal. This is good for your gut. So I have that. And I've been told a lot of acne comes from your gut sometimes. So that's good. So very good about the gut. Um and then I just show that because if I have anything else with charcoal, like I will literally die. Like my stomach will Okay, so now she goes on to talk about the vitamins she takes. There's a coconut charcoal. Again, I'm not familiar with the brand. I can look it up if anyone is curious and add some information in the description box or down in the comments. She's also taking a vitamin D3, which is, I mean, these are good vitamins and nutrients to be having, but it is always recommended to when you can get your nutrition from foods rather than from a supplement. So if you're curious about what vitamin D3 is good for, Daisy claims that she's taking it because it's good for her acne. Same with the charcoal. We can get into that later if anyone is curious on unpacking vitamins and if they actually do what they're supposed to do. But vitamin D3 is a form of vitamin D which you can get entirely just based on sun exposure but some individuals do require more and you can get it through a supplement or through your diet. So vitamin D is great for bone health, for immune system, it also aids in calcium absorption, so all of these are very important functions of the human body and some foods that you can find in if you're not getting enough just based on sun exposure are oily fish, red meat, liver, egg yolks and also a lot of foods can be fortified which means that they're adding extra vitamins into them. So again, you don't necessarily need to take them in the vitamin form, but it is an option for individuals who don't get enough sun exposure or just have very high needs. So whether or not this actually helps with acne, the science is a bit up and down. Again, comment down below if you would like more information on this exact topic and I can break it down later on. But for now, let's just move on with the rest of the video and see what else she eats after the gym. Okay, I'm back. I had to pause for a little bit because the neighboring dog was just barking. So if you hear any barking in the background, I'm sorry, but the sun's about to set. So I got to film the rest of this now. Okay, so even just now when she's explaining her smoothie, the fact that she feels that she has to justify to herself why she's having a whole banana instead of just half a banana, that to me just sounds really sad. Like, it's a banana, that's a healthy food. A banana, yes, that is two serves of fruit, but I haven't seen her eat any other fruit all day, so depending on whether or not she has any meat for the rest of the day, two serves is perfectly healthy. And at least she is having some veggies in here as well with the baby spinach, but honestly, when that cooks down, that probably is only one serve of um, veg. If you want videos on serving sizes, they're coming soon. But just for reference, salad vegetables, you need a whole cup of salad veg to equal one serve of vegetables. If it's cooked, then it's half a cup because vegetables tend to shrink, especially spinach. Anyone knows who's cooked spinach, that when you put it in the pan, it just like 
<laughs> disappears into nothing. So yeah, probably about one serve of veg so far and two serves of fruit in this meal. Alright, I'm not going to comment too much on the protein powder she's chosen because I don't have access to that. I can't check up all the ingredients. I can try and look it up online. But um, generally speaking, protein powders that are flavored like cake and candy, they of course have more additives in them, more sugar. Even if it's sugar free, it's going to have more sweetness in it to give it that delicious sweet flavor. Is it necessarily the worst for you? No, but also is it going to be as good as just like a base protein? Probably not. Also, as I've mentioned plenty of times, protein powders are not necessary to meet your protein requirements. They are fun, they are tasty, they can sometimes be beneficial for certain people, but I don't want anyone watching this to think that like, if you want to be fit, that you need to have protein powders because that just is not true. As far as the rest of the smoothie goes, Almond milk on its own, I don't normally recommend unless it's fortified because almond milk, for example, if you make it yourself at home, while it's a healthy beverage, it's not going to be equivalent to cow's milk or soy milk or anything as far as like nutrient requirements. It's got almost no protein, very low in other essential vitamins. And especially if you're buying organic almond milk from the store or if you're making it yourself, there's no requirement to add calcium fortification or iron or any of these micronutrients that, you, that are essential. So personally, almond milk is not something I normally recommend. It's Again, it's not unhealthy per se, it's just not going to have as much nutrition as soy milk or cow milk. Um, and almond butter, again, healthy, but that is adding extra fats. So that's probably, I wanna say three serves of nuts because she did like a heaped tablespoon and then add a little bit more. So it might even be more than that. So a good amount of nuts. Again, healthy fats, monounsaturated fats are good for you. They're healthy for the heart, but you also don't need to be having too much of that every day. So yeah, let's go on. Okay. And then I'm going to put some of the tea for recovery. Just one scoop. Okay, so then she goes on and adds some L-glutamine into her smoothie. This is another one of those supplements that are so commonly spoken about in the fitness community that I don't think people realize what the actual science behind it is. They're stated to be beneficial for muscle recovery, but again, the science behind this is pretty limited. The only times when a person actually needs to supplement with L-glutamine would be in critical illness, not for muscle recovery. So again, comment down below if you want a whole video on like sports powders and supplements and things like that. I did not personally specialize in sports nutrition, but some of my professors at university were specialists in sports nutrition and they did mention it in a few of our lectures. So, so you don't need to spend your money on it because not only does your body not actually require additional, like it's not an essential amino acid, meaning that your body doesn't need to ingest it every day through diet. You also can get it from foods and not from a powder if you don't want to. For example, chicken, fish, cabbage, spinach, dairy, tofu, lentils, beans, which are all protein foods because glutamine is an amino acid, which is a component of protein. So you don't need to spend extra money on all these fancy powders from the nutrition warehouse or wherever it is you're getting your protein powders from. Are they bad for you? No, but are they necessary? Also no. Okay, so for dinner she has some chicken, some rice, some green beans, and it looks like walnuts on top with a honey glaze. Again, not heavy on this meal, it is a healthy meal. But considering for the rest of the day, she's only had one serve of vegetables. This is only one extra serve. So that's two serves of veg in the whole day. And both of them were green based vegetables. So I would definitely recommend more veggies in a day. 
In Australia, the recommendation is five serves of vegetables each day, preferably of different colored vegetables because they all have different nutrient makeups, whereas baby spinach and green beans are obviously both green, not the end of the world, especially if you had some other variety in there, even some tomatoes, some like roast pumpkin, I feel like would go amazing with this meal. The walnuts and cashews that are on top of the rice, again, very healthy, but considering you've already had a tablespoon and a bit of almond butter in your smoothie, you probably didn't need any extra nuts. That is quite heavy on the um, monounsaturated fats. Again, they're not saturated fats, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but you didn't need the calories from there. So if you took away the nuts and added some extra veggies, again, pumpkin, corn even, some capsicum like carrots some honey glazed carrots would be delicious with this i just feel like you're you're lacking in some areas yeah the the rest of the meal is totally fine nothing more to say about it just basically the fact that um yeah it definitely needs a lot more veggies in the day especially considering you've got like a minute left of this video and i can't see her having a plate of salad for dessert um that is just what i eat in a day that's what you should eat in a day. It's just what I found works for me and my body and my metabolism. Anyways, I love you guys so much and be right to you. See you next time. Bye! Okay, so before I break down what serves she actually did eat in a day, that's the third time now that she has mentioned this is just what I eat in a day. It doesn't mean that you should eat it. So props to Daisy for at least acknowledging the fact that this is her diet and that people shouldn't necessarily follow along exactly what she did. But let me just take a minute to calculate up all of the servings of the food groups that she's had in a day, and then I will close out this video. So, which areas did she actually meet her requirements? Fruit? Tick. It would have been ideal if she had one different kind of fruit in there instead of having two of her servings coming from the same banana, but you know, she still met the requirements, so a big tick there. Protein? She does meet the requirements for that as well. For women, the recommendation is about two and a half serves per day. And she got, what's that, two, three, between four and five serves. She actually got more protein than necessary by quite a bit. Not a crazy amount, but it was more protein than necessary. Now, veggies. Again, in Australia, the recommendation is five serves a day of vegetables ideally different colors and different types of veggies but she only had two serves so that is still three below the requirements nuts she's well above the recommendation with nuts as well the recommendations for nuts and unsaturated fats which again are healthy so they are recommended but probably around two serves a day is plenty and it seems like daisy had anywhere between two to four serves depending on you know how big that blob was that went into the smoothie without knowing exact measurements it's hard to say but a guesstimate is she was a little bit of a, over the recommendations again dairy was below the recommendation for women it is two and a half serves a day and a serve of dairy is one cup of milk or you know two slices of cheese 40 grams of cheese thereabouts and the only dairy or alternative that we saw in daisy's diet today was the one cup of almond milk Four grains, Daisy had between two to three, depending on how much rice is on the plate, because the one slice of toast counts as one serve. And the recommendation is actually up to six serves a day. One serve of grain is one slice of bread, half a cup of cooked rice, or about two thirds of a cup of cereal. So yeah, definitely at least two serves she had, maybe up to three if that was a full cup of rice on her plate and well below the six recommended. But is this unhealthy? No, you don't have to meet all these requirements every single day, but grains do have an important place in our diet and you really shouldn't be cutting out too many carbs because they're important. You need the B vitamins and the fiber. There are so many things in carbohydrate foods that are important that people tend to forget about. So let's not be too mean to carbs and please don't try to cut them out completely. So overall, how is her diet? I would still say that it is a healthy diet. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Again, biggest thing would be adding in more vegetables, maybe reducing the protein a little bit to add more veggies in. And also you can get away with adding a lot more carbohydrates and not being so afraid of 
eating too much carbs. In general, would I recommend following this at home? Probably not, but is it better than going to McDonald's? Absolutely. When it comes to health and diet, there really is no perfect way to do it. It really is all about a balance and it's all about relevance. So is this diet better than someone else's diet? Quite possibly, but also are there other people out there who eat better than Daisy does? Also probably yes. If you like this video and you want to see more, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and of course subscribe to the channel to see more. And I would love it if you could comment down below any other influencers diet that you would like me to review. Influencers, celebrities, whoever it is, you can link me the video in the comments down below or just tell me who it is and where they posted their diet, whether it's a Vogue interview, for example, with the Kardashians, or if it is a YouTube, what I eat in a day, let me know and I will try to review it for you in a future video. But otherwise, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, remember that health is not about diet. It's about lifestyle. Bye. <laughs>